on a roll because this is the third video that I'm filming today. And I don't know in which order it's gonna be, but if you see me in this green top for three videos, you'll know three videos were filmed in a row. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today is another Q&A and it is the Q&A for July. Thank you to everybody who follows me on Instagram and asks me questions over there. I usually post a request for questions around the middle of the day and then I'll leave it on for 24 hours and that's where you can post your questions to me. So make sure you follow me on my Instagram. My Instagram handle is somewhere here and yeah, Make sure you follow me there so that you can ask me a question whenever I post uh, on my Instagram. So let's get into it. The first question is from Cassie and Des. Any upcoming purchases for the year or it's done 2021? I Okay, so one of the videos that I filmed today is actually a haul. So hopefully that will go up next week. There are some items. In fact, this is a purchase of 2021. Any upcoming purchases? All right, upcoming, like even more. Well, um, phew, I don't have anything on mine. Like I, I mentioned in one of my other videos that I am doing this sort of no wish list purchase this year and I'm just buying things as I go. I do want to get a few more like this kind of ready to wear pieces from Hermes. I really enjoy wearing them, so comfortable and I feel so put together just like, I don't know, I just feel so... I feel so good in them. So yeah, I don't mind getting maybe one or two more pieces this year. What else do I want to get? Um, I, don't want, I don't know if I want to get any more bags, but if I do, then you will see in 2021. It's Karina Claire. What color will you choose for your Chanel Gabrielle bag? Well, I actually really love the black, even though I am now exploring color. I do like the Chanel Gabrielle in black. It's the whole look of the bag that is edgy and more biker-like, that black just looks superb with that whole design and the whole look. So I do love black. I also love the burgundy, which I know my good friend here, Amy, has one. I love that color. It is rich and deep and yet, you know, it's not like red, but it's too bright but it's that kind of subtle mauve burgundy color. Gray would also look really good with the Gabrielle. AK underscore ZZH, do you still use your beige and black Gabrielle? Ah, so if you're new to my channel, I actually sold my black and beige Chanel Gabrielle in the size medium. Now, the reason I sold that bag is I, well, firstly, I had color transfer on it, so it kind of freaked me out a little bit. And then secondly is that I do care for the bag. I have a bag organizer inside and I had, you know, you know, kind of taken care of it. However, that bag looked as if I abused it so badly. So the top part of the bag started to sink a lot and maybe it's the way that I was using it and opening it and being a larger bag. It looked terrible after a few months and I, I swear I did not treat it the way it would be treated to be looking like that. So in the end, I thought, you know what? I would want to get the smaller size. In fact, the actual size that I wanted to get was the small, but I ended up with the medium because the small was sold out. Lesson learned, always get the size that you want. And I ended up selling that and I haven't bought my small back again. And I've put it off for a while because I thought, you know, it'll come back, you know, I'll just get it. Wow, the prices have skyrocketed so much that I don't know if I'm ready to pay that. <laughs> Pearly, anything you want to purchase from Chanel 21B Collection? So 21B Collection, I, I've seen that it's launched on the website. I've seen the pictures on the app. And we are going to do a live talking about things that I we like. So I haven't actually explored it. Saw a couple of earrings that are nice, like kind of cute heart-shaped ones. But the prices, oh my goodness, it is so expensive. So at the moment, nothing really catches my eye, but next week, well, but I'm going to try and get this video up by tonight or maybe tomorrow. You will see my thoughts on some of the items uh, on the 21B collection. 8 Lynette, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, working towards a H quarter bag. Ooh, I don't know if I am. 
I honestly don't know if I am because I am just buying things as I see, not focusing on whether I'm building the quota or not. I should monitor it, uh, but I haven't. I, I'm, I really swear I haven't. I didn't even like note down what I bought. I just went into the store. I saw a few things that I like and I bought it. I bought this, I bought like a little bit of things, but not saying, you know, I'm gonna dump tons of money with Hermes because I'm not made of money. So um, to say that I'm working towards a H bag, I honestly am not. I am just buying the things there, but I do think I am building a quota and when the time is right and when I have savings, I will ask for a bag properly. Kimia92, would you consider a wear and tear video about your Justin Clue? I'm considering buying one soon. Oh, congratulations. I do have a couple of reviews of the Chanel, um, oh, sorry, of the Cartier JUC. I will link them down below, but yeah, I could definitely do a updated wear and tear video. To be honest, since that video until now, there hasn't been much of a change uh, in terms of wear and tear. I think the last video I did that I actually sent it back to repair because of that loose hinge. But since then, I haven't had any issues with this. In fact, I absolutely love taking it off, taking it on, putting sorry, taking it off, putting it on, and just wearing it and banging it around. <laughs> literally banging it around. LWQV, I have a brand new Chanel bag that I wish to sell, but have been given low offers. What should I do? Wow, that's tough. If it were me, it would depend on how much I want to let the bag go. And if I can accept the lower price offers, if I'm not happy with the lower price offer, then I won't let it go because I know that if I let it go for a price that I'm not happy with, I will always regret selling it at that price. I'll give you an example for myself, my garden party uh, tote. So it's not brand new like yours, but my garden party, uh, I bought it, size 36, I bought it in Monaco. And I wasn't really using the bag and it just sat there. So. I got lowballed for that bag several times up to a point where I just said, you know what, I don't want to sell it. Then I asked myself, what is the price that I'm happy to let the bag go? Used, but happy to let the bag leave my possession and I have the funds instead of a bag that I'm not using. So I reached a price that I'm willing to let go, take a bit of loss, and I found a buyer for it. So you have to stick to your gun on that price. Yes, your bag is brand new, but if you want to sell it at a profit and you're getting lowball, then you feel like I can't, I just can't be lowball. I have to have a make a profit, then stick with it. But if you say, you know, a brand new, I'm not using it. I'm okay to take, I don't know, 5% loss, 10% loss, you know, then stick to it. Make sure you are at peace with that number and let it go. But if you're always thinking, oh my God, I'm being lowball, blah, 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 but you don't actually have a goal post price, then you'll always feel unhappy with the price that you let go. I hope that helps. Butts, should I buy the mini Jody? <laughs> this is like asking me, hey girl, should I buy it? You know, I would say get it if you love it, like get it if you can find a use for it, if it's a style that matches your whole look, you can style it, you can wear it with many things, you're okay with the top handle, small bag only, and you're happy with it, then go and get it. Like, don't have to think too much about it. But if you pick up the bag and you go like, ah, oh, it's a bit iffy, walk away. Okay, walk away. There are better bags out there if you don't feel 100% comfortable with it, like you just are unsure about it. You asking me, should you buy it? I'm not sure if you're 100% convinced about that bag. So if you haven't tried it in store and tried to put your things inside, play around with the bag in store, then I would say hold off until you can do that. Travi Vlog, what makes a good casual bag? No totes and speedies. <laughs> okay, I was just gonna say, oh, speedy. <laughs> no totes and speedies, huh? I'm gonna give a category of them. And I feel like they are actually really good casual bags, flat bags. And every brand has a flat bag. It's just how elaborate that you want the bag to be. So YSL has good flat bags. In fact, let me just grab mine. Like this is a good casual bag. It's, you know, big enough, but yet small enough. But I would, people would say this is kind of like a bigger bag. Flat bags are really casual looking bags. You put it on your shoulder, 
you go out and it's casual and it's nice. So if you like the YSL brand, I actually like the collage bag. I think that's very casual, very easy going. Um, another flat bag, you know, casual style would also be like the LV Pochette Matisse. You know, really, really casual. Even the classic flat is quite casual. And then the other extreme, like the other version of it, the more modern version of it is the Chanel 19. Also classic, easy going, easy wearing bag. So it's not a tote because totes can be a bit like large and maybe, you know, not so elegant. And speedies, of course, they're just like a lump, like a little sack bag. So you need to organize it, use the bag organizer. But to me, flat bags are actually very casual and so many brands do them. You don't have to get the Chanel ones. You can get YSL, uh, Gucci of course has it. Lux Monologue, Chanel Mini Lambskin Rectangular in lambskin or Lady Dior in either black or blush. <gasps> Oh my goodness, that is hard. I always wanted a Lady Dior, but because you gave me black as a choice, I'm gonna scrape that. So now Lady Dior in blush and mini white rectangular. I am not a white bag person, but between the white and the Lady Dior in blush, which I've tried, doesn't really suit me. So I'm left with the Chanel mini rectangular white in lambskin. That's the bag. Klong Klong, given a chance, you have a budget for a small classic Chanel flap. Which color? Ooh, all right, here we go. Which color? I would definitely take Amy's gray flap. That is absolutely gorgeous. But I would also settle for the beige Claire, either gold or silver hardware. I should have just bought that bag a long time ago. Daniel Melbourne, do you ever get fed up with YouTube? Oh, good question. I do. I have been on this platform for almost six years. I have been doing so many videos. I've been as consistent as I can. Lately, not so consistent. I had a like spike of being very consistent and then suddenly no consistent. Work has, you know, work and life has come in, come in the way of YouTube. Lately, I am feeling a little tired of YouTube. Um, it's getting harder and harder to do videos. It's ha getting harder to keep being consistent. Uh, I, I keep going because of my loyal, loyal subscribers like all of you. When you leave comments, when you give likes and you give me the support, it does help. For I'm, I'm gonna be honest and to say that it does help me with my channel when I see views. Um, but I, I think in the past year, this year and last year, um, I've seen a big change in the direction of YouTube and I've seen a big change in the types of videos that are coming out and I cannot keep up. I'm on this platform to do YouTube on luxury because I love handbags and I love giving reviews, I love to talk about handbags. But in the past, I would say year, I feel there's a lot of negativity surrounding a lot of YouTube content and I'm very emo I'm a very emotional person. I absorb the energy of what's happening and if I'm in the community, I actually feel it. I feel very affected by it and I can't help myself. You know, I get really I get swallowed into the drama even though I may not be in it, but I get like affected by it because I'm also a YouTube subscriber. I watch a lot of YouTube, consume a lot of the content. So I think it's affected me as a YouTuber. I just feel a bit tired of it. A very similar experience that I had was with the makeup community. So on the makeup community, I, I watched a lot of drama unfold, right? And it came to a point where I wasn't really watching makeup anymore. <laughs> when I started to watch makeup YouTube, I was watching product reviews, people using products, and that got me into, you know, makeup and I love it and I enjoy seeing people put makeup and just seeing how they wear eyeliner and I just enjoyed them talking about new products, favorites and all. I just, it was such a happy place. And then suddenly it took a big turn on just 
weird things happening and I see so much similarities happening in this current time with this community and me being a creator on this community as well as a subscriber I feel very affected by it so I'm getting a bit tired of YouTube in that sense in my own community and I I'm struggling a little with it um, which I think a lot of you follow me a while you know that my content is not regular I just I'm a bit lost because as a do I do this video because am I should I film this video what will happen if I film this video you know should I say this should I not do that because I don't want to get offended offend people it's just so complex now and I just I just want to share luxury love so I'm tired a little and um, it's not from the trolls thank you to the community I don't get many trolls I do get them coming up once in a while but it's the content huh? it's the content it's the direction it's what people are more interested to consume now that is very troubling for me I made a promise to myself a few years ago that I will not do drama filled videos I will do content I will not talk about people on my channel uh, unnecessarily I will not uh, throw hate or unknowing or purposely commenting that could affect somebody's emotion so of course I try my best right and I will avoid all kinds of topics that are not aligned to how I would feel like what if somebody did it to me how would I feel so I made a promise to myself to just keep as much as I can to give good content and fun content talk a little bit of drama here and there but not that kind of drama I never touch certain things I notice the trend in YouTube is not aligned to that it's aligned to the other side which is more exciting more fulfilling for people I guess and it's troubling for me so yeah I am a little tired of it um, but I will soldier on because this is what I like this is my hobby this is something that I enjoy and I thank you all for the support and yeah hopefully something will switch maybe it is the pandemic that is taking people <laughs> a little bit I don't know anyway coming back to my Q&A Saffron Spring thoughts on what happened to Tamara ah we just spoke about this this morning um, on the luxury live show and it is absolutely devastating I said that I am shocked from both sides shocked what happened to her shocked of how the community you know partially like a small like a really small group of people went after her but yet really shocked not really shocked really just amazed by what she shared the whole community coming and helping her like offering help and support and so much outpouring of love for her as a luxury lover bags jewelry and all I cannot imagine what went through her head when that happened I tried to put myself in her shoe like it just like oh my god what if it happened to me and I'm sure a lot of you who read that immediately kind of reflected on yourself like oh my gosh what if I lost all my bags or jewelry and all that I'm sure you did that and how would you react I I honestly think I would be devastated really I know that it's just things but I would be extremely extremely sad because I worked really hard for all of these things for all of the years and I absolutely applaud Tamara for her video that she released and she is such a strong-minded girl it's wow because her thought process and her her ability to bounce back out from that is it's really really amazing and she's very very strong and it shows um, a level of maturity high a very high level of maturity in fact that she can take a step back from the entire situation and just say you know what I can rise above this 
it's devastating. I accept it. I, I, I'm still trying to process it from, I mean, I'm, I'm of course just interpreting her video. I'm trying to process it, but I will rise above it because she set goal for, goals for herself. Um, and she did not deny the fact that this is heartbreaking, you know, and I, I could never, like, I think it would take me a long time to just process everything that I've lost and just, yeah, I wouldn't, I don't think I could be like her. I, this would be very, very devastating for me. I, I love my luxury things. One of the things that I learned from that, so, you know, no more about Tamara, but one of the things that after watching her video and listening to her talk, one of the things that hit my mind is, if it were me, how would I be able to move forward with this? Like, I know, okay, there are just things, you know, there are many things in life. Everybody can say that, but they are something that's very important, right? Very important in my life. I love my bags, I love everything. But one thing that would help me move forward, like take the step forward and say, oh, you know, I can rebuild, is that I have used my things. I think that was one thing that just struck a chord with me. The reason I would feel, and I know I think I would feel such loss, is that I have all these amazing things, but I haven't had enough time to really appreciate it take them out for a walk, you know, show them off to the world and just use them for whatever they are. I think that will irk me and make the heartbreak more. But I know if I've been able to put my bags through the ringer, like really use them, get my cost per wear and enjoy every single moment with all my bags, rotate them and all, I feel like I could say bye, you know, unexpectedly goodbye but in a way rather than something that I've never touched pristine in a box like kept like an artifact and then gone I, I think that would be just like I haven't had memories with you you know things like that so it was interesting for me to realize that and I always knew that I want to use my things but me being such a collector me being such a person that wants to keep my things in pristine condition it really struck a chord that I need to use my things for me to appreciate every waking moment that I have with them. Like how, you know, these I've used and I love and just, you know, whatever happens, touch wood, I have had my time with them. That's something that I took away and it sort of reminded me, hey girl, use your things, you know, they're, they're, they're meant to be used and meant to be enjoyed, not kept in a box and just you know, stored away for another day. So yeah, I picked that up from that video, but Tamara, I'm glad she's okay. I'm glad she's moving on and um, I wish her all, all the best. Final question from Masilia Go. I am looking for fine jewelry ring, Coco Crush or Bulgari Bulgari ring. Oh, Masilia, mm, I actually really like the Coco Crush. I'm actually wearing one now. I'm wearing the mini Coco Crush. I love this ring. This is a very, very nice ring and elegant. I also like the Bulgari ring, but I feel like this is a bit more special. Not everyone has a Coco Crush ring. I feel like the Bulgari is a bit more common. So if you're looking for something not as common, eventually this is going to be very common, but not as common, then I would say Coco Crush because it's yeah, it's really elegant. So those are all the questions that I got for this month's Q&A. Thank you again to everybody for asking them to me. I hope you enjoyed today's Q&A. If you want to ask me a question for next month, August, make sure you follow me on my Instagram and make sure you check out my Insta stories. I always keep them on for at least a day and you can just ask me questions there. So anyway, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell as well. Otherwise, everybody, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!